has called us to gather this morning as his beloved children. We come ready to share our authentic selves, our hearts with God and with one another. Wherever we are on our journey of faith, God meets us right where we are, calling us out of isolation and fear into sacred community. We come humbly to praise and worship the one who chose vulnerability for the sake of perfect love. We come this morning to worship and praise the risen God, Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. It is so wonderful to have you here in worship this morning. It just gets a little hotter every day outside. I don't know if you all feel that, but... It's good to be here um, with that coolness upon us and definitely to be together in community. Uh, my name is Patty Hewitt. I'm one of the pastors here at Blackwater. I greet you in the name of Christ and really am excited, uh, I think as we always are on a Sunday morning, just to be together uh, to worship and to share our life together. Um, this morning we are going to hear a powerful, authentic message uh, from our lay leader, uh, Ryan McKnight, as he brings the good news uh, to us and no doubt Maybe a little challenge or maybe a question to leave here with today. But we will see what God has in store for us um, as we move forward during this time of worship. So if you will, will you bow your heads and let us uh, give to God our hearts in prayer. Almighty God, Jesus became vulnerable to the human experience. He came to be with us. He brought healing to our relationship with you and set us on a path to become our full selves. Your son came to be for others and with others. Lead us to take that same risk of growing together. Help us develop our vulnerability and courage that we may help others feel safe and loved in community. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who reigns and lives with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So one of the things that we do every Sunday is we share our lives in a way of hearing a few things that's going on. We're never going to cover everything that's going on in the life of the church. That's what our newsletters are for. So I just want to say if you haven't gotten one, uh, pick one up. If you're worshiping with us online uh, and you want those newsletters and communication from the church and you're not getting it, just offer up your email address and we'll make sure that you uh, get that information every sing single time that we send that out in our monthly newsletter. Uh, so first, the Connect cards, they're there in front of you in the pew backs. Um, either fill those out with a pen and drop them in the baskets, two in the back, one here, or actually there's one on each side now, and one in the back. Um, but you can also take out your phone and hover with your camera app over the QR codes to fill out your Connect card to let us know that you're here. Um, and you can also use the other QR code there to give if that's something that you feel so moved to do. Um, so that's there for you. We really like to know who blessed our time. And also those who might not be familiar with our community of faith, they're newer to the life of Blackwater. I like to reach back to them and just see if there's anything we can pray for them about. Uh, how we can connect, how can they can deepen their lives with God here at our church. So um, if you're one of those people, please just fill it out, and I'll make sure that I get back in touch with you. Um, okay, so to get this out of the way, some of us came in today, and we saw people with masks. I was wearing a mask. Some of you still have your masks on. So um, if you did not see the news that came out of our state capitol, um, they are really right now recommending that if we cannot stay six feet dis distancing from one another, whether you're vaccinated or not, and I, I try to say this every week, there's no shame one way or the other if you're vaccinated or not. That's your personal decision. But if we can't stay six feet apart, then they're highly recommending us to wear a mask. Um, so uh, that is the plea that I will ask today. And then our little group that talks through these things, um, we're going to get back together this week and make a decision on if we're going to make that mandatory again. So um, just come every week with your mask in your pocket or your purse, and we always have extras if you you need that. Um, one of the statistics I saw yesterday is that four weeks ago, 
On June the 24th, the average weekly count for COVID was at 295. Yesterday, the seven-day average was 2,500. So there's a spike. The medical people in our own church are telling us there's a spike. And, and for me, if there's no better uh, example of wanting to protect people than continuing to see April O'Quinn struggle. He, she's back in the ICU. Um, so anyway, that's all I'll say about that. So just carry him with you and be ready. Um, a few things that's coming up next Saturday, uh, the first um, get-together of Heavenly Angels. Uh, they're going to have their brunch uh, on Saturday at 10 a.m., and that's for any... Uh, one... It's canceled? Postponed. Okay. What? Okay, that's postponed. We will have more information to come. I did not know that. Um, we've got one more week to bring in your school supplies. I, I, what I saw today is a great start, but it's not what we can do. So please bring your school supplies um, sometime during this week, um, no later than Sunday. And these go to benefit Bell and Graff Hills and Tanglewood Elementary School. So let's be as generous as we can. That, that's the ask on that. Uh, next Sunday on August 1st uh, is the big school school uniform giveaway and that's going to be from one to four so some of you will be here working that and volunteering for that so thank you for that um, but we'll have people from our community that may not be able to buy brand new uniforms and so they're going to be with us so we want to make this a time of hospitality and inviting them to come and and, and be with us again for worship and for activities that we have um, so pass that word about the that that's next Sunday um, from one until four uh, and then also we've got on August 6th, that's uh, not this coming Friday, but the next, the Back to School Bash. So if you have a child um, through the 6th grade, yeah, 5th grade, 6th grade, a child, yeah, 5th uh, grade. Um, they can come here from 5.30 to 8.30 on Friday night on August the 6th, and you all can go out, or parents can go out and do something fun before the school year starts. So that's it. And then the final thing I want to say, and this will be in the, the, the finishing up of our Sharing Our Life, is that the Walk to Emmaus is happening in October. And so um, it is a wonderful, blessed uh, four-day experience uh, where you go in community. Now, whether that will change, but right now it's still on, and I have flyers at both uh, exits of the church, so if you're interested in uh, letting your soul rest in a time of retreat, both for, one for men, one for women, pick up one of those flyers, read about it, and you can contact myself or Dwayne and Dodie Denham uh, to learn more about that. And what? Oh, and Miss and Ann Merrill, yeah, and Nancy. Oh, um, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. So uh, think about that. And yes, next Sunday, another August first thing. We are we, we've been leading into this. We don't want to do it. I don't want to even acknowledge it, but it will be uh, Dr. West's last day uh, with us next Sunday. So let's boo, boo. Yes, um, you heard that boo, huh? Yeah. Uh, so there will be a brunch, uh, uh, just hospitality time right after this service in the adult education building, both for Dr. West, his wife, Melindy, who's been our wonderful administrative assistant. Her last day is Friday, and also for Michelle up there. Um, she has been unbelievable. We could not have gone, gotten through this without her help with all the media she's done. Um, so she's, she's going to concentrate on her family and her, and her job job. And so we want to wish all three of them the best. So please make sure to come by, say thank you. If you have an expression of gratitude that you want to give them, whether it's monetary or a gift or a card, uh, we're not funneling those through the church for a lot of different reasons. But bring it with you. We'll have a basket or something that you can drop those things in, and that way they can take those and open those um, as reminders of how much they are loved and that they will be missed. Whew! So... With all of that, let's stand if you are able and let's greet one another with the joy of Jesus and make sure to tell our online audience up there good morning as well. Y'all do such a beautiful job of welcoming each other. 
So let us stand, uh, remain standing, and sing together our opening hymn, and, and then that will be followed by the Apostles' Creed. But we're going to be singing number 131, uh, We Gather Together. those timeless words that hold the truth of our faith and what we believe um, using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And now let us, through uh, receiving the gift of song, prepare our hearts as we go to God in prayer. My life flows on in endless song, above its come to pray for your world, a world that so often reveals hurt and pain, a world where so many are struggling because of war and disaster or poverty. Sometimes we look at your broken world and we wonder what might we do to mend it. Show us, Lord, how we can play a part in bringing light and life and healing into this magnificent world that we know that you love so much. Lord, we pray for your church, the church with a capital C, the bigger body of Christ in every place from one corner of the world to the other. As we continue to respond to the pandemic and seek to share the good news, we ask for your guidance in the weeks and months ahead. 
Instill in each one of us, Lord, a tender heart, believing that our leaders, whether those are in the government world, in the church world, in the medical field, Lord, that they're trying their best to care for each person, body, mind, and soul. Be with all your church leaders as they seek the way forward, that they may know that your presence undergirds them. God, we pray for our, our individual church as we all seek a way forward in sharing your gospel with the world. We pray for those in our own church family who are in need of your comfort and healing at this time. For those in the hospital, those who are at home quarantined or experiencing illnesses day in and day out, Lord, we ask that your hand be upon them. Be with them. Let them know that our love and our care and our prayers flow to them, Lord. And we do ask for healing and for strength and for peace that they need. Lord, we place into your hands those who have died and those who mourn their loved one's death. And we also come before you wanting prayers, needing prayers for our own lives. Lord, you know the challenges that we face you know where we are tempted and where we fall short. We ask that you would give each of us what we need to face the struggles of heart and mind and soul. Help us to remember that your faithfulness is ever before us to take the better way, to take the right way, to take that narrow road, Lord, that leads to life. When all is said and done, Lord, our greatest prayer is that you shape us into persons who look and act and speak and think like your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And whether that is what the world wants or expects, Lord, give us the courage to keep moving one faithful step at a time, all for the sake of serving you and building your kingdom. And now, Lord, we lift to you the, the prayer that really expresses this, our greatest prayer, and that is to bring your kingdom here upon earth. So, God, receive the words that come from our heart to your throne now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Sorry about the slowdown. It's uh, coming out of choir to the pulpit. It's a little strange. I absolutely had to turn this mic on because I did not want to be singing with that on. <laughs> so, good morning. I am uh, thrilled to be up here and uh, complete overjoy to be asked to do this. Uh, but before I begin, I have a request. It's a bit of a call to action, though. So it's going to take some uh, effort on your part. Will you boldly participate this morning? Isn't that why we're here? To participate in a life of faith with each other in Christ. So that we can build each other up through love of Christ today. And carry that love with us throughout the week until we return here next Sunday. Because today is more than just church. It is holy and faithful work. It is another opportunity to praise, worship, and love our Lord and each other. It's an opportunity to grow. In that growth, there will be a lot of questions spread out through this message. If one of them touches your heart or steps on your toes, write it down, spend some time with it, and let's talk about it together. If you need me to repeat it, don't be afraid to ask your hand because I'd love to repeat it. Will you be engaged this morning? Will you lean in, and will you respond? So last week, Reverend Patty delivered a message from Ephesians about figurative walls, which were walls that were built from our differences, our differences from other people. You might remember her list of differences that separate us as people, simple things like southern or northern, things like potato salad in our gumbo or yuck, Vinyl records or digital music. Waiting to fill up your gas tank at a quarter empty or literally going all the way down to like it's on fumes. Pineapple on your pizza or not. Saints or Falcons. Or the really hard stuff like vaccination or no way, don't you dare stick a needle in my arm. What about political division? social or racial unrest. As I sat and listened to Patty's message unfold, the thought kept entering my mind was how many walls have I been the architect of? I believe that most of you know that I'm a landscape architect, so you've seen pictures of work that I've done and recognize that I am in the business of designing beautiful places. Part of that work involves designing walls. So while I don't personally build these walls as they're built from the hands of skilled craftsmen, I have been the architect and the designer of many, many walls. So naturally the question that kept jumping in the front of my mind was, have I been the architect of walls in my spiritual life? I want to make sure you hear the difference. I want you to know that I immediately felt convicted to the notion that yes, I have built walls between myself and other people, and I have built walls between myself and God. Because I had, as she mentioned, not appreciated their differences and had categorized people. But my question kept turning back to, have I been the architect of those walls? And what I mean by that more specifically, are there walls that exist between other people that have been built by other people, but by my design? If so, was I even aware of it? And in what ways could I have done it? And why? It's part of that growth, you know, lots of questions. How about gossip, false information, the tearing down of other people? How about this one, professing to be a Christian but acting nothing of the sort? How many walls have been built between people and Christianity by people professing to be Christians but living an entirely different life? Our first reading today is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. I want to warn you, I found this passage to be a bit on the nose and convicting. It describes us as people that we would most likely never want to consider ourselves to be. Paul is writing this letter to his apprentice Timothy, someone that he deeply loves. In this letter, he specifically, in this passage, Paul is describing to Timothy difficult times ahead. It's a description of how Christians will be acting in the last days. But know this, 
hard times will come in the last days. For people will be lovers of self. Let's pause there for a second. Lovers of self. This was like a lightning rod for me. Hearing this answered my big why question. It answered how I and you could be the architects of walls. And a world full of selfies and self-promotion and division. Maybe Paul is right. We might just be living in last days. Or at the very least, living in difficult times. For we will be lovers of self. Lovers of money. Boastful, proud, demeaning, disobedient to parents. Ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness, but denying its power. One commentary I read regarding this passage said that selfishness is the sewer pipe from which all other nastiness flows. Not judgment, not hate, but selfishness. That constant desire to put ourselves over all others. What a description. Can't you see all the anger and deceit and judgment and pride and ungratefulness just oozing out of that pipe? Where is it all coming from? Well, unfortunately, it's coming from inside of us. While I do believe there is evil in the world, I also believe that we are not evil, but we are, we are just broken, living in a fallen world. And Jesus is the only person I know that can repair that brokenness. But since we're continuing the theme of last week's message, let's shift this metaphor from a sewer pipe back to walls. I say to you that selfishness is the foundation from which all the ugly, nasty walls are built upon. Stone by stone, we stack pride and envy and lust and disobedience on top of a foundation of selfishness. It's these walls that divide us from one another and especially from God. Some of you might be thinking right now, I'm not selfish. Ryan must be talking about someone else. I want to be clear to you that Paul was writing about people in the church And before you check out and decide to take a nap this morning because you know this message doesn't apply to you, I want you to try these words on for size. I'm reading from a book titled The Me I Want to Be. The book was written by John Ortberg, who is a senior pastor at Menlo Presbyterian Church. John says this, We suffer from fundamental attribution error. So I know that's a mouthful. We suffer from fundamental attribution error. It means in the way that we attribute things, we are fundamentally flawed at how we do that. We suffer from fundamental attribution error. When I see bad behavior in you, I attribute it to your flawed character. When it happens to me, I attribute it to extraordinarily trying circumstances. When you yell at your kid, you have an anger problem. When I yell, it's my kid's fault for misbehaving. If that doesn't describe selfishness, I don't know what does. I think we've all been there. I know that I participated in this behavior, in this line of thinking. We've all done this to one another and have especially behaved this way towards God probably more than we realize. Why? Because we place ourselves first. How many times have you said, yes, God, but I don't like the way they drive? Yes, God, but I don't like their football team. Yes, God, but I don't like the way they chew their food. Yes, God, but I don't like who they voted for. Yes, God, but I don't want to do that over there. I want to do the easy stuff that's over here. And if we're not careful, selfishness can enter into every little thing we do. We're the common denominator. We're always involved in our own lives. We can't get away from ourselves. It's this culmination of all the little things that build our high and mighty walls. So I say to you again, selfishness, being the lover of self, is the foundation from which all of the ugly walls that divide us 
from one another, and especially God, are built upon. What gets built upon top, that foundation is nasty. It's judgment and anger, discontent, slander and arrogance, disobedience, ungratefulness, conceit, pride, love of money, lack of self-control, and the list can go on and on and on. The wall built on selfishness towers high. The foundation of selfishness can never expand outward because you're alone. You're building it by yourself. It can only go deeper and therefore small in terms of its footprint. While this foundation can be strong, extremely strong due to its depth, the foundation due to this small footprint only allows the wall to go up. Atop this wall, we find ourselves looking down upon the people around us as if we're kings of our own kingdom. We say, look up at me, I'm one with God. But that couldn't be farther from the truth. And so often we only climb down to use that wall as a shield and to avoid real and authentic relationship between people and God. Selfishness destroys relationships. Someone cheats because they're selfish. Someone lies because they're selfish. Think about it. The only possible way an argument, and I'm talking about one of those nasty kinds of arguments that can occur, is from a heart of selfishness. One side or the other, if not both, are being selfish at some point. It's from this pedestal of looking down at our neighbor in judgment instead of looking up in love that is so destructive. You know the argument I'm talking about. It's the one where no one is willing to surrender. Surrender can be hard, and it's nearly impossible for a lot of people. I think it's because we live in a self centered modern world where I have to have control, selfie focus, don't tread on my rights world where surrender has a negative connotation. It's defined as giving up, quitting or losing. It's seen as admitting, is admitting defeat. Who in the world would want to do that? But surrender is not, hear me, it is not giving up, especially in a life with Christ. Surrender is gaining a relationship that is eternal, honest, humble, and full of love. In a life with Christ, surrender is giving in to no more of me and to saying yes to all of him. It is not quitting. It is committing. The same is true as the life with our neighbor. Surrender is not losing, it's loving. What if surrender is actually an embrace. What if surrender is actually an embrace? So a woman in a hurry to catch her flight doesn't have time to grab a full meal, so she opts for a bag of cookies. With a few minutes to spare, she plops down and starts checking her emails when she notices the man beside her takes a cookie from the bag. She immediately begins to think to herself, what nerve of this man? She then scoots the bag closer to herself grabbing a cookie. Again, the man next to her takes another cookie. This back and forth banter, he takes a cookie, she takes a cookie, continues as the woman's blood begins to boil. In fact, she nearly blows her top when the man politely smiles at her, reaches into the bag, and takes the last cookie. He kindly breaks that cookie and gives half to the woman. She takes her half but storms off in frustration, bumping into people with no remorse as she boards the plane. She takes her seat and begins slandering the man, calling him the cookie monster to the poor, unsuspecting passenger beside her. And in her fit of rage, reaches into the bag to grab a bottle of water and sees her brand new bag of cookies unopened. Now this story has been told before, and it, but I felt that it was a perfect example of watching a wall being built in real time. With every cookie eaten by the man, the woman places another stone on her selfish foundation. I started to write this story in a way that painted both people as selfish. Can't you just imagine the yelling, the fighting, the cookies flying everywhere, purses swinging and security being called? It's not too far of a stretch of the imagination, and it happens so often. But I wrote this version to continue with seeing someone's foundation that was not built on selfish but was built on love, 
There is no more perfect example than of Jesus Christ when we speak about selflessness. Was the man in the story Jesus? How often has Jesus been in our midst and we respond by placing another stone on our selfish foundation? Our second reading today comes from Paul, I'm sorry, from Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 11. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he writes a beautiful passage about humility, selflessness, and love. This passage is so powerful. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but be in humility. Regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. I'm going to reread that because that that is so selflessness. It is so powerful. Who, though he was in the form of God, had all the power, did not regard that equality as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So think of ways that you've had power in your life. Have you exploited it just because you could? Or have you used that power for good? I'm sure we could answer yes to both of those questions. But Jesus didn't selfishness his way to the cross. He loved his way to the cross and ultimately performed the most selfless act that has ever been done. And that is why Jesus is my God. Why he is my Lord and Savior, not because of commandments, rules, and laws that help us become better people, but because of love. Someone who loves people that much, someone who does not exploit, that is someone who I want to follow, and that is the life I want to live. He is the foundation in which we should build our lives upon. So how do we tear down those big, self-centered, divisive walls? How do we uproot our selfish foundations? We can start by looking up, by focusing our eyes and most importantly, our hearts on all things above. We can climb down from the top of our walls, begin removing one stone at a time. Jesus said, love the Lord, love Lord God with all your heart with all your soul, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. We can start by sharing cookies. We can start by appreciating and celebrating the differences we have amongst each other. We can start by letting Jesus be the lens through which we see everyone. For everyone is a child of God and is beloved. I say to you that surrender is an embrace. It's no longer a question for me. Surrender is an embrace. When we embrace Jesus, we will build a life upon him. We will see that our self-built, narrow-focused foundations are wiped clean. The foundation of Jesus is deep and wide and only grows in those directions so that we can never boast. From this deep, strong foundation, we will have firm footing. We will always have the position of looking up to God and focusing on things above. From this position, we can never look down upon our neighbor. We can see them and love them as ourselves because we're on equal footing. And for those still atop their walls, we can look up and see them in the presence of God as we stand beneath them knowing that they too are loved and and are his children. Whether we realize it or not, our hearts long for God. Unfortunately, we just get in the way. We place our wants 
and desires before his will. But here's the good news. There is nothing you can do to separate yourself from the love of God. In Romans, Paul said, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So no matter how deep your foundation goes or how tall your ugly wall of division and self-promotion has been built, know that you are loved and you can be transformed through repentance and surrender to Jesus Christ. When this happens, you will stop putting yourself above others. You will cease to compare others to yourself and will begin to appreciate your differences. You will stop demanding that things will be done only your way, and you will stop thinking you are right about everything. You will love your neighbor as much as yourself. You will simply live a life full of joy through Christ, a joy that external circumstances can never extinguish. Your vine will bear much fruit. As human beings, we need solid ground beneath our feet and a firm foundation to stand on. As we just learned, foundations can be built from many forms and many shapes and sizes. Which will you choose to build your life upon? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. What a good word. A challenging word. Uh, a word that calls us to truly re reflect upon our own lives. But oh, what good news that there is. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So as we uh, prepare to go out into the world, um, the, the, first of all, the invitation is always extended to anyone here. If you're online and you want to contact the church and have a conversation with me, maybe with Ryan, with other uh, people in our church about what it means to follow Jesus, what does it mean to surrender your life to him, um, please just email, text if you have my number, come by the office, let's set up a time that we can really um, have a life-giving discussion. Um, and, if you, and if you want to talk to someone like Ryan or some of our other uh, leaders, uh, I will put you in touch with them as well. But um, let, let these questions resonate with us because I, I have a feeling that as they do, you will want to share some things that are in your mind and in your hearts and, and ways that perhaps you've been building walls and you need some help and some prayer about how to start uh, take, taking those down brick by brick. So now I invite you to stand as we sing a, a hymn that is just going to be an exclamation point on this message this morning, number 368. Our hope is built, and we'll sing verses 1 through 3.
So go forth from this place today remembering that surrender is an embrace and that God is our firm foundation because all other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Amen.